What's going on guys? Welcome back. My name is Dustin and last time we were here what we did is we made it so that we created two new uh, areas for us to move into and we also made it so that when we move into these areas the camera bounds gets reset to whatever area we're in. So today what I want to do is I want to create an enemy for us to interact with. So if we just go online to opengameart.org, they have this cool little uh, skeleton character here um, with these walk animations that I really like. So you just scroll down to the bottom, you can click the skeleton 1.3 zip link and it will download this skeleton folder here. So if we go ahead and open that up, open up the PNG file, and I'm going to be using um, the 24 by 32 uh, version of this uh, of this sprite sheet, and they also have 40, 48 by 64, 48 by 64 scale times two, and then 168 by 224 uh, scale times two. I'm just going to be using the 24 by uh, 32 here. So what we can do is we can just grab the sprite sheet that we want. I'm going to use the one with uh, the um, shield on it, the warrior skeleton. I'm just going to drag him into our, our art folder. And if we click that, we can make sure our texture type is set to sprite 2D and UI. Sprite mode is set from single to multiple. Pixels per unit, we're going to set it to 16. And filter mode is going to be point no filter. And then the max size, we're going to set that to 128. So we can go ahead and hit apply, and if we click the sprite editor, we know that this is 16 by 20, or excuse me, 16 by 30, what did I say, 16 by, where is my file, Six, 24 by 32, wow. Um, so we can slice this up here, instead of doing automatic, we're going to use grid by cell size, and we're going to go... Oh, geez. 24 time by 32. And we can just go ahead and slice that. And then now it gives us these 12 different images for us to use. So we can hit apply, close out the sprite editor. And then I just want to come down here and find the skeleton that is facing down in a standing position. Um, we're just going to use this as the base picture for it. So we can just drag that into our hierarchy here. Um, I'm going to rename this to Skeleton. And then on the sorting layer, I want to put this as the same layer as the player. Because what happened is, actually, if I come over to him, if we leave him on the default layer, he's going to render behind our background layer, which isn't which isn't what we want. We want to be able to see our enemy. So I'm going to put him on the same layer as the player. Um, I'm going to add a new component to him, and we're going to add a box collider 2D. And this box collider is going to automatically default to the full size of the image. Um, and the full size of the image has this clear transparent background to it that we can't see. So I want to just click this edit collider button here and we can just drag the collider down to roughly about the size of this skeleton here. Just like that. So the next thing I want to do is I want to um, give this skeleton some physics. So we are going to also add a rigid body 2D um, we're going to turn off the gravity scale because we don't want him just falling down on our scene. And we're also going to freeze the rotation on the z-axis. That way he is not going to spin. So um, if I go ahead and hit play here, we're going to have an issue with 
us being able to run into our skeleton and he's just gonna fly off to the side of the screen um, and that's not really what we want it would be good if we were playing if we had like we were walking on ice or something like that and making so that um, we can slide it all the way to the end but what I want to do is on the rigid body I want to change the mass here to just something relatively high um, that way it has more mass than our player and we can't just kind of push it around. So now if I walk over to him, um, I mean, you can see that he's kind of moving, but it's not um, enough to really show anything. So um, now what I wanna do is I wanna set up the animations for this guy. So, So if I highlight our skeleton um, and open up our animation window, we can go ahead and select this create a uh, new animation button. We wanna make sure we save this in our animations folder. So I'm just gonna call this, we're gonna, I wanna do our idle animation first and I'm just gonna use one image for our idle animation. So I'm just gonna go ahead and name this um, let's just go S idle like that. So now what I want to do is I want to drag that same picture that we used here into our animation timeline, just like that. So now that we have our idle and our single idle animation, because what I want is for when we move, when this guy moves around, I just want him to just default back into this idle position from whichever direction he's facing. So I'm gonna go ahead and create another clip and we're gonna call this S walk down. And I'm gonna create another clip. We're gonna call this S walk up. Create a new clip. S walk right and one more for s walk left just like that so now before i get anywhere else into this if we go into our animations folder we have all of these uh animations now and it's just a lot to kind of keep track of just the way that it is so in our animations folder, I'm gonna right click and create a new folder. And I'm gonna call this folder player. And what I wanna do is I wanna drag all of our player animations into this folder. Um, highlight them all and drag them in. And let's do all of these walk animations as well. I think that's all of them. Just like that. I'm gonna make it smaller so I can see our folder as well. Just like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing for our enemy. And if I just highlight all of these, I can drag those into our enemy folder. So now I want to go into our animator. No, I want to create these animations actually. So if I highlight our skeleton, let's start with the top one. Let's go with S walk down. And if we go into our art folder, let's zoom back in here so we can see. Let's find our walking down animation. And it has these three images here for walking down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this single position, the standing position. I'm just gonna drag that into our timeline. And then I'm gonna go up to, what is it, skeleton six here. I'm gonna drag that into our timeline a couple of nodes down. I'm gonna go back and grab the first uh, image again, drag that to the next one and then just drag this uh, skeleton eight in like that. 
And then if we hit play, you'll see we have this kind of jerky motion, same way we had with the player. Um, so what we need to do is we need to add that last uh, image in here one last time so that it goes through the entire cycle like that. So now we have this little walking animation in the down direction. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for um, the rest of these. Um, but I'm, I think I'm going to just speed up the video um, instead of doing all of this in real time. So I'll be back in just a moment. All right, so now that all of that is done, you can see that when I hit play on these, all of our animations work just fine. So <clears throat> what I want to do now is I want to set this up in our animator. I would, um, so if we click our skeleton, open up our animator, I'm going to delete all of these except for our idle animation. So I'm just going to highlight all four of these walking animations and click delete. So now I want to right click, create a new state from new blend tree. Um, I'm going to move this over a little bit and I'm going to call this blend tree move. Now, I want a couple of parameters here. We're going to set this up very similar to how we did our player. I'm going to rename this blend float to move x. I'm going to create a new parameter float called move y. And I'm going to create one more parameter. This one's going to be a bool. So a bool is basically just saying whether or not something is true or false. So um, this one I'm going to call within range. And I will explain what that is for um, in a little bit. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that when we move our player to a certain distance away from this enemy, He's going to start moving towards us, and then when we're out of that range, he's going to stop moving. So, and that's why we're using, uh, that's why we're going to be using this within range bool here. So, I want to go in here, and I want to create a transition from our idle uh, animation to our move blend tree. Um, I'm going to click the transition, and I'm going to turn off exit time, drop down the settings, turn off fixed duration and set our transition duration to zero. And I want to go from the idle state to the move state when uh, within range is true. And then I'm gonna create another transition from the move to idle. Click the arrow here, turn off exit time, turn off fixed duration set transition duration to zero, and I want to go from the move state to our idle state when within range is false, just like that. So now what I want to do is I want to actually set up this blend tree. So if we just double click that our move blend tree, highlight our blend tree, we can set, set the blend type to 2D simple directional, and the parameters we're going to use is move x and move y. So now we're going to go ahead and add our four motion fields. We're only doing four this time because when we did it with the player, he had um, diagonal um, animations as well. This one only has up, down, left, and right. So we're going to use uh, four for this. So now if I click the little circle, Let's start with walk down, click the next circle, walk left, click the next circle, walk right, and the last one, walk up. Now I'm going to go ahead and drag this out so I can see the full names of these, just to make it a little easier. And on the walk down, we want the position x to be 0, we want our y position to be minus 
on our walk left, we want our x position to be minus 0.1. If this will work, let's see, minus 0.1. Y position at zero. Uh, walk right is going to be 0.1 on the x, zero on the y. And walk up is going to be zero on the x and 0.1 on the y, just like that. Perfect. So now we have everything here set up and ready to start putting some code into this, um, which we are going to do in the next video because it's going to be a little bit longer. And I and that's all we really need to do to set up the animation. So if you're enjoying the series, please feel free to like and subscribe down below. Hit the bell notification icon so you can see when. I post my next video. Um, if you have any comments, please post it down below. Uh, let me know what you want to see in this series. Let me know if you know of a better way to do any of these things that I'm doing. I am still basically learning um, how to make these games and whatnot, and I'm more than open to uh, learning better ways of doing these things. So, But until then, I will see you next time.